and this is an historic occasion. The Prime Minister is the first head of state from the nine independent Pacific Island nations to pay an official visit here at the White House. The Fijian nation he so ably represents is a model of democracy and freedom, a tremendous example for all the countries of the developing world. Fijians can be proud indeed that in their country, people from diverse religious, racial, and cultural backgrounds live and work together in peace and freedom. When people picture Fiji, they usually see something like this. This is rightfully fair. After all, the majority of tourists stay on resorts and never travel into the cities to experience what's really going on. And what's really going on in political terms is rather more sinister. Fiji's level of democracy is extremely low. So low, in fact, that it's classed as a hybrid regime. A hybrid regime can be defined as half democratic, half authoritarian where democratic rules exist, but with authoritarian governance. Fiji currently sits 79th on its level of democracy, but search back through its history, and you will find one of the most far-right nations that have ever existed on Earth. In just 2013, the nation held its first ever non-racial vote. Rewind 55 years, and you will find that America signed a non-racial voting act called the Voting Acts Right of 1964. My fellow Americans, I am about to sign into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This was a landmark piece of federal legislation in the United States that prohibited racial discrimination in voting. Up until 2013, Fijians were only allowed to vote for the politician who shared their race and ethnicity, not their ideology and values. The different interests of both indigenous Fijians and Indo-Fijians have served to form much of the nation's political landscape. This has caused four military coups since 1987, with the most recent coup in 2006, which introduced martial law for a staggering eight full years. The 2006 coup took place under extraordinary circumstances, following several bills being passed that only favoured Indigenous Fijians in an already unstable political climate. Uproar commenced. This resulted in the Fijian army, which was made up of roughly 95% Indigenous Fijians to side with the Indo-Fijian political party and, as a result, took over the government and enforced martial law. Fast forward to 2018, and the nation held arguably its most stable election. This saw the Fiji First Political Party become re-elected, scraping through with just 50% of the vote. Mr. Bani Marama, the leader, an indigenous Fijian born in 1954, has long advocated for the equal rights towards the minority ethnic Indian community. All too often we hear of the dangers of far-right movements gaining momentum, especially in Europe. But when it takes place in a developing nation, under the most extreme conditions, the rest of the world hardly hears about it, nor takes any notice. 